embark on a captivating journey through time as we unravel the historical origins of the Silk Road. Join me in exploring the mysteries of this ancient trade route, the Silk Road. Discover what made it a pivotal force in world history, why silk held such significance, and why it's rightfully called the Silk Road. Stay tuned for an insightful exploration, and if you're as intrigued as I am by the tales of the past, don't forget to subscribe for more historical adventures. Historical Origins of the Silk Road The Silk Road was a vast trade network connecting Eurasia and North Africa via land and sea routes. The Silk Road earned its name from Chinese silk, a highly valued commodity that merchants transported along these trade networks. Advances in technology and increased political stability caused an increase in trade. The opening of more trade routes caused travelers to exchange many things, animals, spices, ideas, and diseases. In the first century CE, during the reign of Emperor Tiberius, silk had become a big problem. The luxury fabric, imported at great cost from China, had become a symbol of decadence and excess among Romans. In order to make their supply of silk last longer, merchants unraveled and rewove their fabric into thinner, sheer garments. This practice had a side effect of making the garments nearly transparent. Main Content Overview The Silk Road was a vast trade network connecting Eurasia and North Africa via land and sea routes. The Silk Road earned its name from Chinese silk, a highly valued commodity that merchants transported along these trade networks. Advances in technology and increased political stability caused an increase in trade. The opening of more trade routes caused travelers to exchange many things, animals, spices, ideas, and diseases. In the first century CE, during the reign of Emperor Tiberius, silk had become a big problem. The luxury fabric, imported at great cost from China, had become a symbol of decadence and excess among Romans. In order to make their supply of silk last longer, merchants unraveled and rewove their fabric into thinner, sheer garments. This practice had a side effect of making the garments nearly transparent. Seneca the Younger, a writer and imperial advisor, complained of people wearing silk. I can see clothes of silk, if materials that do not hide the body, nor even one's decency, can be called clothes. Wretched flocks of maids labor so that the adulteress may be visible through her thin dress, so that her husband has no more acquaintance than any outsider or foreigner with his wife's body. In the year 14 CE, the Roman historian Tacitus reported that the imperial senate made it illegal for men to wear silk, resolving that, oriental, eastern, silks should no longer degrade. This prohibition on silk did not last. The demand for silk continued to drive trade between the Roman Empire, China, India, and many places in between. To understand what caused this trade in silk, we need to look at how Chinese silk got to Rome, Fergana horses became a highly desired trade item in China. China imported so many horses that the Dayuan people who controlled the Fergana Valley refused to sell any more of the horses. This led to a three-year conflict known as the War of the Heavenly Horses. By 101 BCE, the Fergana Valley belonged to Han China. Control of the Fergana Valley also opened a route to the west. Skip to main content. Main content. Overview. The Silk Road was a vast trade network connecting Eurasia and North Africa via land and sea routes. The Silk Road earned its name from Chinese silk, a highly valued commodity that merchants transported along these trade networks. Advances in technology and increased political stability caused an increase in trade. The opening of more trade routes caused travelers to exchange many things, animals, spices, ideas, and diseases. In the first century CE, during the reign of Emperor Tiberius, silk had become a big problem. The luxury fabric, imported at great cost from China, had become a symbol of decadence and excess among Romans. In order to make their supply of silk last longer, merchants unraveled and rewove their fabric into thinner, sheer garments. This practice had a side effect of making the garments nearly transparent. Seneca the Younger, a writer and imperial advisor, complained of people wearing silk. I can see clothes of silk, if materials that do not hide the body, nor even one's decency, 
can be called clothes. Wretched flocks of maids labor so that the adulteress may be visible through her thin dress, so that her husband has no more acquaintance than any outsider or foreigner with his wife's body. In the year 14 CE, the Roman historian Tacitus reported that the imperial senate made it illegal for men to wear silk, resolving that oriental, eastern, silks should no longer degrade the male sex. This prohibition on silk did not last. The demand for silk continued to drive trade between the Roman Empire, China, India, and many places in between. To understand what caused this trade in silk, we need to look at how Chinese silk got to Rome. Let's find out. State Power and the Silk Road One cause of expanded trade was the growth of imperial power. Near the end of the 2nd century BCE, Emperor Wu of Han mounted many campaigns against the nomadic Xiongnu people. Xiongnu horsemen had raided Chinese settlements along the northern border for many years. Emperor Wu looked for a new source of horses for his cavalry in order to deal with the threat of the Xiongnu. Emperor Wu sent an emissary named Zhang Qian to find allies in the fight against the Xiongnu. Zhang returned to China, eager to discuss the wonders he had seen in Fergana, modern-day Uzbekistan. Along with rice, wheat, and grapes, the region produced hardy, heavenly, horses. A heavenly horse of Fergana, depicted in a 2nd century CE bronze sculpture from Han China. A heavenly horse of Fergana, depicted in a 2nd century CE bronze sculpture from Han China. A heavenly horse of Fergana, depicted in a 2nd century CE bronze sculpture from Han China. Image Credit Wikipedia. This image is in the public domain. Stop and consider, what caused Emperor Wu to send an emissary to Central Asia? Choose one answer. Choose one answer. Choice A, the emperor wanted to find allies and resources. A, the emperor wanted to find allies and resources. Choice B, the emperor was curious about how people in Central Asia lived. B. The emperor was curious about how people in Central Asia lived. Choice C. The emperor wanted to scout and conquer Central Asia. C. The emperor wanted to scout and conquer Central Asia. Fergana horses became a highly desired trade item in China. China imported so many horses that the Dayuan people who controlled the Fergana Valley refused to sell any more of the horses. This led to a three-year conflict known as the War of the Heavenly Horses. By 101 BCE, the Fergana Valley belonged to Han China. Control of the Fergana Valley also opened a route to the west. With a new supply of horses, Han China projected its new military strength throughout Asia. The expansion of Han control led to the First Pax Sinica, or Chinese Peace. During this time, the standard of living in China rose and cities grew in size. Economic growth and political stability led to increased demand for luxury goods from far-off places. Stop and consider, why might economic growth and political stability cause more trade? Possible answer. The Roman Empire was expanding during this time, too. Victory in the Punic Wars gave Rome control over the western Mediterranean Sea. Over the next few centuries, Rome expanded to control all of the Mediterranean shoreline. The 1st century CE saw the beginning of the Pax Romana, Roman peace. The Pax Romana lasted about 200 years and was a period of relatively few wars. As with Han China, political stability brought more trade. Rome gained access to overseas trade routes to India via Egypt and began to trade regularly. Although Rome and Han China expanded greatly, there was still a lot of distance between them. Central Asia is covered with mountains, deserts, and vast grasslands. Traders provided an essential link between the Roman and Han empires. Travel on the Silk Road Traders had to find ways to move their goods efficiently. To travel overland, the camel was favored mode of transportation. Nomadic peoples in Central Asia started domesticating camels as early as the second millennium BCE. For example, the Han Chinese used camels captured from the Xiongnu to carry military supplies.
Camels could withstand the harsh desert conditions through Central Asia and were also able to carry up to 500 pounds at a time. Pack animals, especially camels, made the transportation of goods over land on the Silk Road viable. What is the Silk Road? The term Silk Road refers to an extensive trade network that stretched from East Asia to Europe and parts of Africa. It is more accurate to talk about Silk Roads in the plural instead of the singular. Where is the Silk Road, or its significant routes, located? The Silk Roads began in several parts of eastern China. They extended south into the Pacific and Indian Oceans and included several major maritime trade routes to India and Ethiopia, among other places. Overland, the roads passed through what are now Mongolia, Tibet, Afghanistan, Iraq, Turkey, and Italy. Many other countries were significant stops along the Silk Roads. Overall, the Silk Roads covered more than 4,000 miles of land from end to end. What purpose was the Silk Road used? For centuries, the Silk Roads were used for trade, transporting valuable goods over great distances. In addition to goods, the roads also served as transportation routes for ideas, religions, people, and even diseases. As early as 1000 BCE, the roads were used and continued to be important well into the Renaissance. The earliest evidence of trade is Chinese silk found in Egypt. At one point, Parts of the Silk Road were closed due to the fall of the Roman Empire, however, they reopened in the 13th century, where their use flourished more than ever. Silk Road Trading The Silk Roads were some of the most extensive trade networks in world history before modern globalization. In addition to those listed above, Silk Road trading heavily featured the following. Gems Gunpowder Horses Slaves Horses and slaves were typically traded from the west to the east, while gunpowder and gems, and silk, were generally traded from east to west. It is essential to understand that travel and trade along the Silk Roads did not take quite the same forms that many people think of today when they imagine traveling merchants. Very few people, if any, traveled the entire way across the Silk Roads from China to Europe. Much more commonly, Merchants would travel back and forth across a relatively small section of the road, selling their wares to other merchants who would take them the next leg of the journey. The short distances allowed many people to make a living as Silk Road merchants and made the cost of goods rise as they made their way across Asia and Europe. Some cities were trade hubs where several routes converged, in some cases becoming powerful enough to emerge as city-states in their own right. It was also common for inns and small towns to crop up along the trade routes to cater to traveling merchants.